I rather talk about. I mean, almost everything, and then but also talk about Lamb. I'm just, but I think we're probably short. Good segue. I'd rather talk everything else. No, but no, no. let's talk about that. Would this. be a tacky and inappropriate, <laughs> I think, thing to say to the filmmakers, uh, Ross Partridge and uh, Jennifer Lafleur, and uh, what's your, are Taylor you Williams, Taylor Williams, our producer? Taylor, but you're no, no. Well, you're here, Taylor. Yeah. If you have something you want to kick in, by all means, it would be a pleasure. But it's so nice to sit with you guys and. I, I was also a big fan of the Off Hours. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you and very much. I was sitting with Megan Griffiths uh, during your screening the other day at uh, the gentleman, so it was yeah. you know, nice to run into her. So it's nice coming here and that happening, you know. Um, and then I, last night I was watching Patrick Wang's film, The Grief of Others, and um, and and there is Una again, and I'm like, wow, that's not only strange that she's in two movies coming out in the yeah. near future but that I saw them both and they were both at South by Southwest That's can we just talk the rest of the show about Una Lawrence yeah I would, I would love to I could uh, spend a million years talking about how much we love her she uh, you know we said early on when we were trying to cast the role of Tommy that if we didn't find the right girl we wouldn't this wouldn't happen and when we got our casting director Allison Estrin she said to me you know this is not going to be that difficult like, really, we're looking for a girl, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, you hear those things about going nationwide and seeing thousands and thousands of girls. In the Hollywood in, system, though, right now. In the Hollywood system, but in the indie world, she said, well, it's not going to be that difficult because there's only about five girls who can actually do this. And she brought in 25 or 30, and, and there was five that we looked at, and there was actually two it got down to, and, and one of them was somebody who we thought, you know, was more right for the part physically and kind of seemed in the world perfectly. And then, um, Allison kept saying, you have to meet Una and you just had, this girl is, is unique. The other girl was, it, it was unique as well. And she's yeah. wonderful. And we recommend her for so many things, but there was something, as soon as I met her, we just knew that we would tailor the whole film around her. And she became like the glue that actually kept the whole set together. People fell in love with her. And for me, it was just when I, when I first met her, she had the, Ability. She was literally just so non impressed with the whole thing, and she was so comfortable of who she was at eleven. You know, which is she. She was so. I thought you know the, the dichotomy of having somebody who's so comfortable at eleven years old, and it's such a crucial time in, in a young girl's life, mm-hmm. which is what the character is about. Right. It, it just offered up this whole other dynamic to the to the film that we just are so thankful for. It's interesting. You do the film Lamb, which is adapted from a, a novel of the same name. Yes. Okay. By the author Bonnie Nazam. Bonnie Nazam, mm-hmm. who was at your premiere. I saw she her. was, uh, and I know she was in a daze. Kind of, a, I saw that last night at Patrick's screening too. The the author was there and just saw Una. In a, <laughs> yeah. right. Well, she had a much smaller role, but does to see your work transformed into the screen, and it's 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 disorienting and must take a long time to just digest it. And because you chose that, such a challenging character, Ross. Right? You. Yeah. Like people. But I, I are going to struggle to like figure out this guy and when their feelings about this guy. Yeah, of course. Like, uh, how is it possible you make him likable? And he's kind of a monster, but kind of right. Not a monster. It's very difficult to. I mean, he's he, his act. Yeah, I mean, his actions are 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 obviously you know the moral uh, act, his actions are more question at, at times and very specific things. I mean, the biggest one being that he um, kind of introduces her to a, an idea of a, of, a, of a road trip that nobody else knows about. Yeah. That's morally a thing that an adult should not take on with a, a young child. But yet David Lamb himself is so complex and perplexed about life that he's almost as a child himself. Mm-hmm. And he relates to this girl as almost being on somewhat of par level. So you realize that you can't really judge I think that you can't judge him. You you want to judge him as we do as adults looking at other adults. But his emotional capacity and his emotional level is so still stunted that he is not in the same realm. So we have a hard time understanding how to uh, identify and define this person. And that lends itself to being a really interesting kind of quandary where we have to place our own specific moral judgments on somebody and place them. It's easier for us to look at this guy and say, you know what? He's a monster. He's definitely this. 
no, he's definitely this. I'm feeling something. I don't know what it is, but he's definitely that because the ambiguity is really uncomfortable. And for me, it's, and that's where it becomes really interesting is that emotional ambiguity is something that invokes an empathy that we're not used to, to being invoked, uh, you know, having to question certain things that maybe we have to exercise a little bit more of our hearts in order to try to understand somebody to try to then get answers to things and become different people and become better and become more compassionate. And walking that line was something that we were really focused on a lot. You know, when Ross was adapting the novel into the screenplay, we all kind of talked, you know, with Taylor Williams and Mel Eslin, our producers, what, what is that line and what's the difference between reading a story on the page and seeing two actual people in front of you on screen acting these things out? And how do we still bring the heart of the story through without losing the audience by tipping it one way uh, too far in one direction? And I think that that was something that Ross really kind of masterfully uh, executed in paying such close attention to uh, eliciting the empathy out of, out of the audience as much as humanly possible. I mean, there uh, were, absolutely, absolutely. There's no, I mean, yeah. There were times where, you know, I would have a scene and we did, we did the scene. Um, there's the scene in the, in the, the bathroom where it, he's, you know, trying to do what he probably imagined a parent should do. And yet it, it involved, have her wash off. I mean, and, yeah, and just, and, just take and a bath. It's just something that and he, in the, his mind, you yeah, know, probably right. thought that, wow, this is what a good parent we should do. And let me take care of you in that way. And yet, you know, after I did the scene, it, I literally walked out and I think I talked to Taylor and I was like, I don't know if did I we just crushed myself. Line? Yeah. Right. If well, I that, crushed myself. Yeah. And yet, you know, I, I've screened that scene and a few times and people have come up to me after that and said, you know, parent and people don't even Una's dad after I did the scene, I think it was, yeah, that's who I, I ended up talking to. And I was really kind of devastated. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to save this character after doing something like this. And, and he said, this is what parenting is. You never know. And it's constantly, you're constantly, and like he said, I have my daughters and sometimes I want to literally tear their heads off and scream at them and, and, and yell at them. And that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's something deeply. I've sick decided about that when I start problem. having children, then that's how I'm going to go about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you no, I think, the, I think the, he well, said it is complex. It's always so complicated. It is. It is. I, I'm a father. I have a 10, 11 year old. He's turning 11 shortly. Congratulations. Thank you. You've, uh, you've gone that far. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting because I, 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 I'm choosing, I have to be careful what I talk about because um, it's not a movie based on shock or or spoilers or mystery or suspense. There is that suspense is, a, is, a, is there. Tension certainly is from the get-go. I was more uncomfortable in the scenes with uh, Jess Weixler, I think, than I was with the with Una, Jess, interesting, great, yeah. you know, because that's where I really didn't know what he was going to do or be. I felt like at a certain point I realized, oh, he, 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 he has true affection for this young girl, um, and I felt kind of okay. And then, but with uh, at a certain point, you know, and then with 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 Winnie. Winnie. Jess's Jess's role, Jess Weixler, the actress who. Uh, she she's terrific. she's wonderful. Yeah. She really is terrific. It's yeah. nice to see her do something kind of dramatic and. Um, yeah, her character was a bit. Yeah, their relationship uh, t to me was it was really important, and it, and it showed the side. You know, it was. I think it was so uncomfortable because it was the al alternate alternative side of this man's life that he, like everyone could look at this and be like, well, here's somebody who actually adores you, and here's somebody that maybe this does feel good. And in his mind, at times, wow, this is great. You know, obviously he was married, and he's he's trumped that marriage by having an affair and many affairs. And here's somebody who's actually just so, you know, basically in love with this guy, and yet it's not enough. And I think that that's what's so uncomfortable. It's like, you know, there are people who are, when you're in that place and people are showering love upon you, and yet it's not going to fix it. We don't know what it is that's going to fix it. But that almost, you almost get aggressively uncomfortable as, you know, an audience, but also as a character where this makes me angry because yeah. you're giving me something that I can't reciprocate, and I don't know why you're giving it to me. And it's interesting to see that side of David Lamb that is darker and less honest and, and more manipulative being acted out with somebody who's more age-wise on his level, but then you see more of the purity and the heart and the true love and affection, however misguided and, and you know, 
inappropriate uh, with with the little girl, but you just see you see why they care so much about each other. What was it though that you actively sought out to make this film? Because and, and what the novel you read the novel ostensibly, and uh, did uh, like you must have known this would be kind of a real challenge to pull this off. I and mean, yeah. maybe that was that's maybe I'm answering my question. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I knew it was it was incredibly challenging, and I think after reading it, it wasn't a matter of, you know, it, it, I, you know, I, I deferred to other people and said, is this just, am I crazy? And yet everyone had the same kind of response where whether or not I was going to do it was pretty much ultimately answered as soon as I read the book. There was something about it that, mm-hmm. I, that I thought, I kind of have to do this. This yeah. is a challenge that I really wanted to, and, it's a, and for me it was about love. It's a love story, and it's a love story turned right. upside down, yeah. not about a romantic love, but two people who there are no boundaries when you're in such a desperate pursuit of having some sort of love. Well, you, you know, I mean, also, by the way, so there, I mean, 20, 30 years ago, these movies were, these were stories that we were telling. Yeah. And we see them less frequently now. I agree. I mean, Robert De Niro built his career on, on kind of the anti-hero I agree. guys, and they were far further a fringe than, than David Lamb is. I think there, you know, and right? I think there are things in, in film today that, you know, when it's hard for me to, uh, you know, I feel some, questions and things from people when they respond so quickly and, and immediately want to judge this character, you know, I, I go and my answer to it is like, you know, you, if you go to films today, you'll see things that are so far beyond moral questions than this, you know, m- killing and murder and, right. and all these other things are so commonplace that you can go and spend $15 and just watch people selflessly, violently just kill other people for no reason at all. And that's entertainment. Right. And we're not even given any kind of intimate uh, uh, exp- explanation. Not, or, or, right. And we're not given, yeah. we're not, oh, they're not open. We're not allowed to see through and who these people are. And meanwhile, we do get access to David Lamb entirely through, you're in almost every shot of the film. And, you know, uh, so it's, we have a very, very weird relationship with our, our films today and our characters. I, I completely agree. And, you know, it occurs to me, you really do, you like, you, I guess are seeking out, I've seen a couple of things you've been in and you seem to be really attracted by those types of roles. It seems. And yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think I'm, I might be a, a, a smaller person than, uh, I am in height or, or, you know, Jen, um, is a very outward person and I could be very outwardly, but I think that I really am interested in, you know, the, just the, the, the smaller kind of feel to, to life and how, personal and intimate like our own dilemmas are and sometimes mm-hmm. it feels like you're on an island you know mm-hmm. and I, I think characters who uh who are constantly like a, their thumb is on the thing that's actually driving them to try to like live or, or not live is really interesting yeah and i think that ultimately it's a movie about everybody's just doing the best that they can and they think that they're doing the right thing even when they're doing the complete wrong thing. And I think that's interesting. You know, I, I want to watch movies where people are flawed and making mistakes, but they're trying. They're trying and they're acting out of love. Whatever their way right. is. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and I also like, you know, you know, you didn't give a big explanation. I mean, that's the other part. That's the other thing that we no longer are allowed to figure things out on our own. We're always given the expository parts and we're given the... We have to be told everything to feel comfortable and not in, a, in, a, in an uncomfortable place when we're watching films. And, and uh, that uh, is not a, 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 there in Lamb. It, you are, really have to kind of figure yeah. this, what we're talking about, out on your own. I also think it's not the, it just proves also that Q&A's moments after the credits roll are really not, I, I say this sometimes, that it's just, that's not a normal thing. You no. need to, fil- most films that are good and that have, things going on you know that are complex yeah. need time people need time they how do you formulate uh, your your response to a film and and then ask it in in the form of a question like five minutes three minutes yeah, after I, I you agree. just watch something yeah. you need an hour or two or at the least you yeah. know and then process it and then have the q a so i think know, that yeah i possible. think that that's really especially if uh, a film like this uh we've received a lot of emails from you know doing test screenings and think for people you know, not just weeks later yeah. who are still like, I'm still thinking about this. And, 
you know, at first I was just so, I I was so rattled that I was emotional. I didn't know I was angry and yet I was felt sad and beautiful. And I was thought it was beautiful, but I was angry. And then Mm -hmm. a week would go by and they were like, wow, this is because of that. I'm so grateful, you know? Right. And we could, and we can, uh, we could, uh, also recommend, like, I'm sure you, people would experience things differently if, if you watched it a second, you know, time. Yeah, or, you know, for sure. They'll catch things. Yeah, time. exactly. Sure. Yeah. The film, again, is called Lamb, L-A-M-B, like the little, yep. uh, baby sheep. And, and it's at, it's had its, its world premiere? World, at, world, South world premiere, South yeah. Okay. South okay. And we'll Saturday. be hopefully looking forward to, uh, and we'll be looking forward to, uh, seeing it soon, theatrically and otherwise, uh, soon in New York and other cities. Yeah, you know, we're working on that now. I that's, know you that's, are. That's the beginning. That's the, this is the beginning part. That's right. Well, we, well, try the to beginning enjoy. part where we take you home. That's well, basically in the in the movie, and that's enjoy the yeah. little moments. Uh, you know. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, and we'll we'll get together again soon. Great, it's lovely to talk to you. Thanks so See much. You again. Thanks. Thank you guys.